One of the most effective ways to ensure you have a forehand to hit on ball three is to hit the big kicker out wide. Dominic Team hits his kicker with so much weight behind it, knocking his opponents deep and wide on the backhand side, with a small sharp cross-court angle to find if they want to get it on his backhand. Team gets the shape on his kick serve from an emphasised load and rotation, which allows him to drive upwards steeply from underneath the ball. As his body drives up, his racket is thrown out to the side to get the immense spin needed to bring that amount of shape down and the ball into the court. When this is executed perfectly, the ball jumps high and wide off the surface and it is nearly impossible to return it to his backhand. That's good, good for the serve, wasn't it? Plenty of kick up high into that Djokovic backhand. Known as one of the biggest servers of all time, John Isner currently leads the pack when it comes to aces, averaging over 20 per match. If you are ever lucky enough to see his serve up close, you will understand why returning his serve is one of the biggest challenges in the sport. Not only is there a huge amount of height and pace to deal with, Isner is also accurate and consistent with his ball toss placement, making it very difficult to read. Without emphasising the ball toss to maximise the angles, Isner gets the direction he is looking for in the very last moments before he strikes the ball. When his elbow and wrist straighten underneath the ball, he still has some lag on his racket before he strikes. It is only in this tiny window, just before the contact, that you get any clues as to where he is going, but good luck processing this and acting on it in time. Erased with one swat. Biggest serve of the week as well needed to do it. Rafael Nadal is one of the best around at ensuring a forehand on ball three of the rally, and it is a lot to do with his movement around the court. Adding in his leftiness makes the task of getting it to his backhand even more challenging. This is because he is asking you to hit a backhand down the line into a very small space off his wide slice serve, whereas the right-handers go to the forehand with this serve, which is often easier to find. Even for those players who have great backhands, this is a tough ask as Nadal can consistently deliver a swinging serve that moves away from the returner, getting them outstretched on the backhand. Many people think that you cut into the side of the ball and throw your shoulders around early to get this movement, but the best players actually throw the hand out and away from their body and then bring around the shoulders after the contact. When Nadal executes this, you can see that he gets the spin with the movement of his racket on the ball and the direction with the rotation of his body and shoulders. Splitting the workload onto different body parts in this way results in a consistent and reliable shot. Milos Raonic has fantastic disguise on his serve and one of the most important technical areas that gives him this is not allowing his shoulders to open up too early. Staying side on for as long as possible is so important because once the shoulders start opening, the returner can see the relationship between the throwing shoulder and the ball, giving them a good indication on where you are likely to serve. The longer you keep side on, the more core strength is required to generate the rotation and power, as you don't have long to get through the rest of your swing. Raonic executes this technique to a very high level, keeping his opponents guessing and the service games rolling. There it is again. Moving early on the return is known as cheating and is a key part of a successful return. Cheating happens when players move while the server is looking up at the ball toss, but before they have made contact. One of the most difficult serves to cheat against is Roger Federer. This is because he keeps his eyes on his opponent for a long time before he looks up to his ball toss, meaning he will see any move the returner makes and can then switch the direction of his serve with ease. This requires huge amounts of skill to execute, as he needs to release a perfect ball toss without looking at it, be ready to change the direction mid-swing, and nail his spot. This is no problem for Federer, as he can change the direction of his serve very late into his swing. Returners are looking to cheat on the Federer serve more than most, as he is well known for his accuracy, and if you aren't anticipating, you will find yourself stretching and coming off second best.
Second survey, bang on the line. To counteract the modern deep return position, you might want to consider an underarm serve. Mixing in this shot as a variation not only takes skill, but you also need to be a character that doesn't mind going against the norm. Nick Kyrgios uses the underarm serve occasionally to add in a contrast to his huge flat first serve and get his opponents running. Kyrgios has success with this serve as he plays it with great disguise, using the rocking of his racket at the beginning of his normal service motion to disguise the beginning of the underarm serve. Adding in some extra cut on the side of the ball ensures it will zip off the court at a short, sharp angle. Well, it's two underarm yeah. serves in the set. One of the best servers the sport has ever seen is Ivo Karlovic. The height, the pace and the disguise all add up to making this serve a nightmare to deal with. On top of all of this, Karlovic also moves forward looking for the volley behind his serve. This closes down the spaces available, forcing the returner to hit with width or down to his feet. The best returners in the world are incredibly good at hitting these spots, but asking them to do it repeatedly with a contact at head height and off the pace that Karlovic delivers is an incredibly tough challenge. Riley Opelka isn't exactly unusual in his approach to his kick serve, but the end result is quite unique. The combination of his natural height and pace means that it jumps up higher and moves wider than we have ever seen on the tour before. Opelka has significant experience on clay, which means that this particular serve has been years in the making. The height that this serve comes down from only emphasises the kick on the ball more as it has slightly further to travel, therefore more distance to continue moving away from the returner. On top of the ball being further away, it is higher too, making it nearly impossible to return. It's himself to make it, at the very least. What she can do about that, the kick like a mule out wide. If the returner is getting in a good rhythm, you want to give them something different to have a go at. Daniel Medvedev does this by drastically changing his serving position, moving way out wide to the sideline. This changes the angle the serve is coming in at and the size of the spaces the returner needs to hit. This positioning rotates the court on its axes in the centre of the net and shifts the angles to favour more of a cross-court return. Medvedev has to leave a big space for the down-the-line return, but with the serve coming in from a more acute angle, changing the direction by such a large amount is incredibly difficult for the returner, who will often drag it into the middle, where Medvedev will be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I mean, that was ridiculous. I mean, if you're a returner, you're expecting him to serve there, but what can you do <laughs> that kind of serve? Another variation Daniel likes to bring in is going full pace on a flat second serve. All of these elements together leave returners unsettled and uncertain. Oh, how do you like that? How do you like me now, says Medvedev. Two sets to love. Seven.